All right, so in lesson 11.1, we talked about um, dilations, right? Wrote rules for dilations in the coordinate plane. Um, we determined if something was a dilation. I generally just kind of figured out that a dilation takes an object and doesn't really change the shape of it. If it's an equilateral triangle, it's still going to be an equilateral triangle, but it just makes it bigger, which is an enlargement, or it makes it smaller. Right? That's what a dilation does. Also, like the position of the image after the dilation is dependent on um, how far the image is away from the center of dilation and where that center of dilation is, and also the scale factor, which is what, uh, remember, it's the ratio of, let's write this down, scale factor. Oops, can't see that color. <laughs> right, scale factor is the image, an image distance over a corresponding pre-image distance. Right, it's the, it's also called the scalar. It's also uh, identified by the letter K. It's what you multiply the pre-image points by to get the image points. Okay, then in lesson 11.2, which kind of relates to how we get this image pre-image ratio, um, is that, um, we define similarity as two shapes that one can map to the other one by way of a dilation and then like a rotation or a reflection or something like that. Okay. Um, and this lesson actually is really where we get this part about the ratio of the image to the pre-image. Okay. And it's where we match up corresponding parts of similar figures. And really this is the kind of stuff that you, when we apply this, it's the same kind of stuff that you did like in middle school when you first start learning about similarity. Okay, so here we go. We just, just like we would do with congruent figures, we match up corresponding parts, parts that are, that are in similar positions with each other. Okay, so like in this example, um, they want us to measure these angles, and I'm not going to take the time to do that, so I'm just going to give you like, a best guesstimate for what these are, but you would use a protractor to measure these. All right, so we look at angle A, which is here. That's very clearly a right angle. Um, so let me put a little mark in there. Oops. Uh, so there's a right angle. And then K corresponds to that, right? It's in a similar position. It's also a right angle. So 90 and 90. Um, what's another right angle there? N and D, they correspond to each other. 90 and 90. Um, and then let's say M is probably about 120, and so is C. So 120, 120. And then that would leave, because if you remember in a quadrilateral, all the angles have to add up to 360. That leaves 60 degrees for L and 60 degrees for B, right? So 60 and 60. So are all the corresponding angles congruent? Yes. So the angles are congruent, but let's look at the sides. Obviously, they're not congruent because you can tell. Let's look at it. NM is a lot longer than DC. But if I look at those, um, they call it MN down here. That's one, two, three. Actually, each block is two units, so that's eight units long. Right? And then CD is four units long. Right? Two, four. Um, let's look at uh, AD. Is one, two, three, so that's six units. And KD is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Right? Um, A, B is easy to count. This is one, two, three, it's like three and a half blocks, so that's seven units. And then KL, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks, so that's fourteen units. Okay. Um, and then AB, I'm sorry, I wrote that in the wrong spot. My bad. 7 and 14. And then looking at BC, let's look at BC real quick. Now remember how we can do uh, a right triangle here? So that's a right triangle where this side is 2, 4, 6, and this side is 3. So if I do the Pythagorean theorem on that one, it's going to be the square root of 3. Uh, squared plus 6 squared. I get the square root of 45. The square root of 45 is actually broken down into 9 times 5. That 9 gets to come out because it's a perfect square. I get 3 square roots of 
5, right? So that's BC. X3 square root of 5. Um, LM, if we look at that one, let me change colors, make it easier to see what's going on here. LM, if I do this right triangle, that's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 12, right? So I'm going to put 12 squared. And then 1, 2, 3. Uh, is that 3? Yep, so that's it's over 6. Or 6 squared. Uh, let's see. That should give me... What is that? 144 plus 36 is 180. Right? And then if I break this 180 down, that's actually 6 times... I'm sorry, 36 times 5. Right? The 36 gets to come out as a 6, so I get 6 square roots of 5. That's the length of LM. Now, if I look at these all, all these fractions will reduce. So you can probably tell what they reduce to, right? This reduces to one half. This, the square roots of five cancel out, so that's really just three over six, which is one half. Four over eight is one half. Six over twelve is one half. So all the, the ratios of the corresponding sides, they're not equal. Or I'm sorry, the, the ratios are equal, right? The sides are not equal, but the ratios right are equal so that's a yes so are the two shapes similar well, let's go back up here and look the side lengths have to be proportional that's what we mean by they all reduce to the same ratio and then the angle measures are equal well, that's what's happened here so yes they're similar by this definition up here of similar figures and that's the reason that we can do similarity transformations to match one to the other is that the sides are proportional because I'm multiplying all the side lengths by that same scale factor. That scale factor is the ratio that we would call for similarity. In fact, while I'm here, let's talk about this too. If these two shapes are similar, here's how I would write it. A, B, C, D, similar to K, L, M, N. This is called a similarity statement. And again, since we're talking about corresponding parts, like A corresponds to K, B corresponds to L, C corresponds to M, and D to N, right? And you notice this looks a lot like a congruent statement, and it works the same way. You just got to remember that this symbol right here doesn't have the equal sign, so the sides are not equal. The sides are just proportional, but it's the angles that are equal. Okay, um, so this is where, kind of repeating what I just said, right? If figures are similar, then all the corresponding angles... A is congruent to X, they're congruent. B is congruent to Y, C is congruent to Z, right? The angles are congruent, right? But the sides are proportional. Okay? So that's what they've got here. The ratios of the sides are all the same. And that's the corresponding sides. Um, so actually, let me go back real quick, just to show you you've done this before. I know at some point in middle school you've had like a couple of triangles and they've said like okay these triangles are similar and they put like a 5 here and an X here and they put a 10 here and um, let's say a 12 here right and they want you to find the value of X and the way we do that is we write a proportion right a match up corresponding sides so 5 to 10 has to be the same as x to 12. Notice how I'm going in the same direction as I write this proportion. And then when you have a proportion, all you have to do is cross multiply. I'm just kind of a word of warning here. When they teach you how to do this on the HRW program and you look at the examples, they typically don't cross multiply. What they would do is in this case, they would multiply both sides by 12 to get rid of that 12 on the bottom, which is fine. Um, but sometimes doing it that way makes things a little confusing. So we just get used to doing what we call the cross product. So I do 12 times 5, and I do 10 times x. And 12 times 5 gives me 60. And if I divide both sides by 10, I find out the x has to be 6. So that's, not, that's, that's something that you did, I know, probably in 6th, 7th, maybe 8th grade. Um, 
of setting up a forges and a cross multiplying. So we make it a little harder here just because we've got one triangle inside of the other. And what you need to do really is draw these triangles separately from each other so that you can more easily see what's going on. So we got this triangle AEB, and then you got this bigger triangle ACD, right? Oops, I meant to change colors. Right, there's ACD, the bigger one. And then we're gonna we're gonna fill in these measurements from those two triangles, right? This is A C. That's supposed to be a B down here. A E B. My bad. B blue. There we go. A E B. And then A B D. And then C. Right. If I fill these things in, I know this angle here is 50. Um, I know this side length is DC is 5. Um, and then this side, this is kind of where it gets interesting. This side right here is Y plus the 5.6. Something that's easy to miss. Sometimes you just want to label that as Y. But that's just talking about that little segment there between D and E. So over here we've got AE is equal to 5.6 and then we've got AB I don't know what that is I do know this angle here at B is 3x plus 14 so now that I got these two things drawn separately I can see what uh, corresponds to the, oh I forgot this part here is 4 but we can see what corresponds so when I'm looking for the value of x okay I take this 3x plus 14 and match it up with that and I can write that equation because the angles are supposed to be equal to each other right so this I'm just going to solve by subtracting 14 from both sides that gives me 3x equals what is that 36 and divide both sides by 3 and that'll give you x equals 12 right um, now finding the value of y y has to do with the side length so I can't just set this equal to that right these things are not equal they're they're proportional to each other. So I can match this up and do y plus 5.6 over 5.6. And that has to be equal to, i got to go in the same direction, 5 corresponds with the 4. So 5 over 4. And then if we solve this by cross-multiplying, right, we're going to do 4 times that, uh, which will give me... Uh oh, what's going on? Undo, undo, undo. Four times this whole thing. Now this is in parentheses. So it's four times y plus 5.6 is equal to five times 5.6. So when I distribute this four, I get four y. And then four times 5.6 is, see four times five is 20. And four times 0.6 is 2.4, so 22.4, right, um, 5 times 5.6 there again, 5 times 5 is, what, 25, and then 5 times 0. 0.6 is 3, because I do 5 times 6 and then just move the decimal over, so I get um, 28 on that one, right? 25 plus 3 is 28. Now I can just subtract, oops, let's change this to minus 22.4 from both sides. That gives me 4y. Equals, that's what, uh, 5.6. And then I can divide both sides by... 4, right? Add that by 4, divide that by 4, and I end up with y equals, what was that, 14, I think? There you go. So you're just matching up the corresponding parts. Angles you said equal, right? Angles are equal. Sides, you're going to have to do a proportion. Pretend like that says proportion. Um... Okay, here's another one, right? I'm just matching up corresponding parts. 
So for this one, if I'm looking at, let's do the angles first because that's probably the easiest. That C corresponds to R, right? So I got 4x minus 27 equals 95. I'm going to add 27 to both sides. It's going to give me 4x equals so 1, uh, let's see. 12, 122, I think. And then I can divide both sides by 4. Um, I should end up with x equals 3 and a half. Let's see, no. Let's turn I think that's 30.5. Okay, and then let's do this. Match up corresponding parts to do the side lengths. 4y matches up with 10, so I can write 4y over 10. Has to equal um, 3y minus 5 over 5. Okay, um, I'm going to cross multiply. Alright, this is going to be oops, 10 times 3y minus 5. And this is going to be 5 times 4y. So over here, that gives me 30y minus 50. I've distributed that 10 through the parentheses. And then 5 times 4 gives me 20y. And then if I subtract 30y from both sides to get my y's together, so that'll give me, what, negative 50. Oops. Negative 50 equals negative 10y, which if I divide both sides by negative 10, I get y is equal to 5. Okay, Okay. one more example and then I'll be done. Um, again, you're just matching up corresponding parts. So this one is just kind of twisted upside down, but look, one thing I can do is match up angles here. And that's the only angles that they give me. So again, the angles have to be equal. So 5 times x minus 5 has to equal 4x. Let's distribute that 5. And then let's do this. So let's subtract 5x from both sides. That'll give me negative 25 equals negative 1x, or just negative x. Or I can just leave it that way and say I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. Um, so I get x equals 25. Alright, then let's match up the sides, right? Again, these are proportional, so I know this 1.5 is the shortest. It's going to match up with the shortest over here. So 1.5 over 1 has to equal this 2y minus 8 over, it matches up with the 4 centimeters. Again, I can cross multiply, right? 1 times all that is just going to be 2y minus 8. 4 times 1.5 uh, gives me, what, 6? Um, then I can add 8 to both sides. That'll give me 2y equals 14. And then divide by 2. So y equals 7. So again, remember where angles that correspond have to be equal, sides have to be proportional. Right? In other words, you're doing like a ratio for them. Well, we just answered that on the last slide, right? Sides are proportional, angles are congruent. And that's it. That should be enough to help you do get through the homework. If you got any questions, feel free to email me. We'll see you in the next lesson.